my decision to judge from nursingmadra.com. I hope all you are keeping well. I hope you all subscribe to our channel nursingmadra.com. If you didn't subscribe until now, just please subscribe the channel to get my continuation of the video. So today our class is related to the pneumothorax and the chemothorax, pneumothorax. So we will go through the section. So all are ready? Okay. So the pneumothorax is the accumulation of air in the pleural cavity. So it is an accumulation of air in the pleural cavity. We have mainly three types of pneumothorax. The first one is open pneumothorax, second one is closed pneumothorax and the third one is tension pneumothorax. For the prometric section, this tension pneumothorax is more important. The open pneumothorax is caused by some of the open chest wounds and the closed pneumothorax or spontaneous pneumothorax it is caused by the rupture of the flaps inside the lungs. So we can see that one in the chronic smokers. And the tension pneumothorax, it is due to the increased thoracic pressure. It can be closed or open pneumothorax. So because of increased pressure, how we are getting increased pressure to the thoracic uh, pressure, how it is increasing. So the main causes are mechanical ventilation with peep mode. If you are keeping for a long time, it, there is a possible chance. And milking or clamping the chest tube. Uh, and okay, these are the main causes of this tension pneumothorax. Now we will move through the signs and symptoms. The most important part of this uh, pneumothorax, all the prometric exams, they will be asking this um, signs and symptoms. The first signs and symptoms, tracheal deviation towards the unaffected side. Usually they are asking if a patient have the pneumothorax on the right side, tension pneumothorax on the right side, so the tracheal deviation towards, the, towards which side? That means in the opposite side, unaffected side, that means the left side. So that question will be usually asking for the prometric exam. So the tracheal deviation towards the unaffected side. And the diminished or absent breath sounds on affected side. Where it is affected, that side there will be diminished breath sounds will be there. That is the important characteristics of the tension pneumothorax. And you can see other symptoms like tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, restlessness, dyspnea, then some subcutaneous emphysema. Subcutaneous emphysema will be the evidence by crepitus on palpation. So, in the subcutaneous tissue, we can hear the uh, like uh, the crepitus sound. We can hear. Okay, air is entering into the subcutaneous tissues nearby areas so uh, we can hear uh, by doing the palpation okay and um, exceptional dyspnea will be there cyanosis will be there for the pneumothorax the diagnosis which uh, we are doing to um, uh, conclude the diagnosis is chest x-ray and abg so in abg mainly we can see in respiratory acidosis we can observe in abg okay this is uh, regarding the pneumothorax and next we will move through the management of pneumothorax. Let us move to the pneumothorax management. So if open chest wound you have to cover with sterile dressing that is vented dressing. Vented dressing means three side you have to close and one side you have to open to escape the allow to escape the air. So that is vented dressing. So this is also a question how you will uh, do the dressing for the pneumothorax open uh, wound, chest wound is there means how you will be uh, doing the dressing. Okay, that is vented dressing. And you have to provide high foulage position, administer oxygen and inside the chest tube. These are the main management of the pneumothorax. I hope you understood regarding the pneumothorax. Okay, and uh, only just we are I am taking the points only which is coming for the exam so no need to um, study by detailed descriptions only the important points 
So next we will move through the hemothorax. Hemothorax, as you know, hemo means the blood. So accumulation of blood in the thoracic cavity. So here um, decreased chest expansion will be there and diminished and absent chest breath sound will be there. The management is immediate chest tube insertion that is ICD insertion and if the blood collected is more than 1000 ml so we have to do thoracotomy if it is required. This is the management for the chemothorax. I hope you all understood uh, this uh, section. So uh, we will move through the ICD. Okay, that is most important topic is ICD, intercost drainage tube. Okay, the ICD care and all. So we will move through the ICD section. So as I said, we will just move through the ICD, intercostal drainage. What are the indications? The main indication is empyema, then a pneumothorax, a hemothorax. So empyema means pus in the pleural space. Pneumothorax, air in the pleural space. Hemothorax means blood in the pleural space. After cardiac surgery, dark blood drainage and less, it is less than 100 ml per hour or 70 to 100 ml is normal. And if it is bright color or more than 100 ml per hour, you, you should inform the physician. So, if uh, the ICD tube is uh, you have to dip in the distal end of the ICD tube in the water cell drainage system. So normally what how it is bubbling and fluctuation in the water cell chamber okay. So intermittent bubbling and fluctuation in the water cell chamber are the signs of functioning of the ICD that is normal signs of functioning of the ICD. If it is continuous bubbling or tidally and absence of bubbling indicate malfunctioning of the ICD except in pneumothorax. So water in the water seal chamber fluctuate as the patient breathes in and out. If the patient is breathing on their own, the water will increase during inspiration and decrease during the expiration. It will be opposite if the patient is on positive pressure mechanical ventilation. There may be intermittent bubbling which is expected as air is drained from the pleural space especially for the treatment of the pneumothorax. Remember that a pneumothorax is an air leak between the lung and the chest wall. Therefore, air can escape into the water seal chamber causing intermittent bubbles. Okay. Always you should keep the bottle of normal saline near to the patient. So if the ICD tube is accidentally detached from the chest wall, okay this is the uh, important question the, usually they are asking. If it is detached from the chest wall, what is your responsibility? So you have to do non-porous ghost part dressing that is petroleum based dressing you can do at the insertion site and the end of the ICD tube you have to dip in the irrigation uh, solution or the saline. So while removing the ICD advise the patient to deep breathe and hold that means the world salva manu you have to ask the patient to do it. You should not clamp or should not stripe milk the tube without doctor's order except in pneumonectomy patient. So, if the, uh, as I said you before, that ICD is detached from the water seal chamber, you should dip the distal end in the sterile water. So, what if it does not fluctuate at all? What we will do? The lung could have re-expanded or there is a kink somewhere. So, you have to check for the kinking. So, if there is excessive bubbling, okay, we can suspect that there is an air leak somewhere. And you have to monitor for the air leak. So you have to note the skin around the insertion site for any subcutaneous crepitus. That means the crackling sensation felt on palpation. That is due to the carbon dioxide escaping into the tissues. Previous video already we discussed regarding this crepitus. So uh, it is due to the carbon dioxide escaping into the tissues. And 
the ICD patients, those who are in ICD, keep the patient moving by turning frequently, coughing and deep breathing. So it will help move fluid and improve the lung function. So one more uh, another question is uh, what if the chest to become dislodged. So in that case what you have to do means cover the site with a sterile dressing and tape on three side. So already we uh, went to the dressing we already discussed that this allows air to escape and prevent, prevent the tension pneumothorax and you have to notify the physician immediately. First priority is the sterile dressing okay that is vented dressing. And if there is any system break, you have to insert the tube 1 inch into a bottle of sterile water or sterile normal saline and obtain a new system. So milking or striping tubing, it is not recommended anymore because it creates too much negative pressure. Always follow your organization policies. And the clamping tubing, it will increase the risk of patient developing a tension pneumothorax. So never do it without an order and follow hospital policies. Educate prior to remove and how to do the valsalva manual. This is already we discussed. Uh, so this is performed by having the patient to take deep breath, exhale, bear down. Okay. So um, this is performed by the patient when the tube is removed. This are all the things related to the ICD uh, care. Okay. So as I said, the uh, intercostal chest tube drainage is the uh, most important question in the prometric exams. Uh, you have to by heart the normal functioning how it is and the abnormal functioning and if there is any system break or the malfunctioning, uh, air leak, all those things how you can manage it. Okay, and uh, if it is dislodged, how you will um, do that one and everything. Okay, how the window dressing you are doing. And while removing the ICP, how uh, ICD you are, how you are teaching the patient, okay? So the Vansalva manual, all those things you have to be thorough with this ICD, okay? I hope you all understood regarding the pneumothorax, ICD, chemothorax and all. Um, if you like my video, just subscribe uh, our channel, Nursing Mantra. And um, for getting the updated videos or continuation of these uh, videos, you can just press the bell icon in the right side of the video.